Hi, this is Victoria Nolley, and here with me again is Dr. Darren McCauley, uh, the director of the St. Andrews Sustainability Institute, and he is also a senior lecturer in the School of Geography and Sustainable Development at the University of St. Andrews. In the previous videos, we discussed about fossil fuels and energy justice, and we also discussed about the connection between alternative fuels, that is renewable energy, and energy justice. In this video, we want to explore more on the energy justice from a geographical perspective. But before we start, I would like Dr. McCauley to introduce himself again. Sure, happy to, and thank you very much for inviting me back um, for this really interesting development of the previous discussions that we've had. So yes, I am lucky to be the director for the San Andreas Sustainability Institute. I also run the master's programs in sustainability in the School of Geography at St Andrews. So I'm hoping to tap into some of the experience I've had both there and involved in various projects that have brought me to different parts of the world that I'm happy to share. All right, uh, thank you very much for the introduction. So in this video, we want to look at the geographical perspective of energy justice, because mm -hmm. in the previous videos, we realized that developing and developed countries face different energy challenges, but not only that, the resources are also unequally <coughs> distributed. Mm -hmm. So can you take us through energy justice from a geographical perspective? Yes. Happy to. So the, the two key concepts and ideas in geography are space and place. It sounds very grand, but effectively in terms of space, as geographers, what we try to look at is the interconnections of those inequalities you refer to across local, national, regional, and perhaps international levels. So whenever we're trying to consider where do these inequalities take place, we think of scale. At what scale do those inequalities take place? Mm -hmm. And to what extent are they connected? The second concept is place. Mm -hmm. And place really, as a geographer, reminds us that if we want to try to understand inequalities that take place because of fossil fuels or alternative energy systems, we have to be very sensitive to the place-specific histories, contexts, mm -hmm. in which these various infrastructures are developed. Uh, that give us our electricity and our heating. So whenever we look uh, across the world, what we find is, of course, this idea of nimbyism. So we need a lot of electricity and heating to be generated, but very few places want to accept that's their backyard where it should take place. So as a geographer, what we tend to do is we try to connect together these skills by trying to look at, okay, internationally what we require, what we need, is of course more electricity, more heating, but locally, where do we find locations where that's possible? And the types of inequalities that develop, because what we find is that infrastructure is often developed in the poorest areas, both uh, urban and rural. And we also find, geographically speaking, that, we've, that we're really focusing heavily our infrastructure development in parts of the world where people are less likely to protest and that again often are areas of socio-economic deprivation and this is where we need to think of policies and solutions that are sensitive to that reality and try to incentivize communities other than those that I've referred to before to both accept and hopefully help develop new energy solutions and not just the way that we've dealt with infrastructure development in the past. All right, uh, thank you very much. And then uh, uh, the last question is, how can we get policymakers mm. to take geographical perspective into, into, into play, like when they're drafting their energy laws? Because I know you're not a lawyer, but no. at the same time, it's very important for us to, besides having it on paper, we have yes. to put it into mm -hmm. laws. How can we convince them to consider the geographical perspective of energy justice? Yes, it's a, the million dollar question, as they say. I mean, um, in terms of legal geography, which mm. is a subfield that mm. exists, what geography tries to say is, well, whenever we design our solutions, we should be sensitive to the, the cultural dynamics of the locations in which we are suggesting that this infrastructural development should take place. Mm -hmm. So as for a company, what we would like to see is a greater application of environmental impact assessment, 
a much more comprehensive approach uh, to perhaps considering the locality in which these uh, various infrastructures that we need are developed and be aware of the cultural importance uh, on which the land is incredibly important uh, whenever we're considering where we're going to actually develop. So I think as geographers we would really reinforce the importance of environmental impact assessment, social license to operate, uh, mechanisms that companies should use. We would try to suggest to lawyers to think about how can we integrate cultural dynamics into those impact assessments so that they're taken more seriously whenever we're considering where we're going to develop our energy infrastructure. All right, uh, thank you very much. That marks the end of our third video. In the next video, we shall talk about energy justice from a global perspective. Stay tuned.